What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. Hope you all are doing okay and had a great holiday. Today, we are here with Einar of Wardruna. Thank you so much for your time today, man. I appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yep. It's so great to have you here. The newest album, which translates to White Raven, is coming out in 2021. Do you consider this a continuation of what we heard off of the Skald album, or do you think that this is more of a continuation of the Runajald album? And I do apologize for the pronunciation mistakes if they're there. No, no, no. It sounds, sounds good. Uh, well, no, it's um, <clears throat> it's definitely a continuation of, uh, of the Runic trilogy. Um, and... Um, yeah, it, it, it also follows the same kind of creative um, concept that we've been working with all along. Uh, it's basically the themes themselves that define the, the musical needs, basically what the instruments to use, what, uh, yeah, when I record, where I record, what sounds I use, etc. Uh, it's It follows the same kind of, um, uh, yeah, creative concept. Um, I would say um thematically it also sort of uh, roams the same universe but um i would say the the Kvitran, uh, the white raven album is is kind of goes more into um into detail and in, um, uh, yeah kind of zooms more into to specifics and um is perhaps more um related to uh to mankind, uh, in a way, to to the human sphere, uh, in in terms of our relate, it kind of explores the relationship between man and nature, but also it goes into these um, old ways of define how how people define themselves, um, different aspects of of uh, defining the soul, spirit, etc. Because in the old way of viewing these things, it it, it wasn't um, um it wasn't only body and soul it, it was much more layered and and i would say complicated um and so that's kind of one of the things that the album does it goes into uh exploring these different uh, aspects which is very very unique especially because i feel like you know from studying a little bit of you know norse mythology and stuff you know it, it very much represents not you know just the gods and everything like that but he, the human interaction with it as well do you feel like it kind of focuses a little bit more on that rather than just strictly the spirituality like the human relationship with our absolutely and uh, and uh, it is um as i feel with all of my music you can sort of choose in a way if you if you if, I would say most of it applies whether or not you're a spiritual person uh, or not. It, it, it's, um, it can be a f philosophical thing. It can be a psychological thing. Uh, it can be actual stuff, you know. Uh, it's very much about our relation to nature as well. Uh, and I think those things definitely apply whether or not you're, you have a spiritual approach to it or, or if it's just um, an intellectual one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I know plenty of like diehard atheists who don't believe in anything spiritual, don't believe anything in metaphysical at all, but they really do resonate with the music at all because it feels like it kind of envelops them in an atmosphere and a realm. And I think you do a good job at, you know, demonstrating your story, but also making the listener feel at one with it on their own. Yeah, but you know, our, our popular con modern conception of what magic is or what metaphysics is, I, I don't think necessarily um, those are always correct. And I, I also think that um, uh, that a lot of thing, uh, these things that uh, have been called or is called uh, sorcery or magic or, or things that have an effect on, on you can be described scientifically also you know um in any case i don't see see a conflict between these things and especially that's something i'm aware of um i'm wary of uh, within my music as well that i i, I want to keep these things open-ended and i want to leave a lot of room for the listener uh, within the music um, that's very often reflected in my lyrics as well that it is, um, it's more like throwing out a lot of questions rather than stating a, a bunch of truths, if you know what I mean. 
if a listener though wanted to really get a feeling of what you are singing about, if they kind of wanted to put yourself, put themselves in your shoes, should they listen to the whole trilogy first and then listen to White Raven? Are your albums kind of like Lord of the Rings? You shouldn't listen to the second one without listening to the verse <laughs> and so on. No, I, I think they, uh, I think they all work uh, very well as a, as standalone pieces as well. Um, so I, I, no, I don't, I don't think. So, because they all have their own little universe and 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 their own story that they are preoccupied with. Of course, the Runal uh, uh, trilogy um, is much more together um, as a story, but still, I would say the 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 predominant factor is the, its own entity and its own story. Do you feel so, that maybe because White Raven touches upon a lot of the human interaction with uh, the metaphysical, that maybe there's also more of your personal life also demonstrated in this album as well? Yeah, of course, that's uh, that's a natural consequence, I would say, uh, or at least a natural consequence that it might be perceived that way. Um, I think with all, all my music, there is an element of personal, of course, there needs to be, uh, I think it's, it's important that there is an, uh, uh, in some form or another, a personal connect connection to what you are actually uh, doing and performing that makes it stronger, uh, more relevant, but more likely to resonate with other people as well. But at the same time, uh, keep that necessary distance. So there is actually room for the listener as well, um, that it's not too like, uh, um, full of my stuff uh, so it, it's a fine balance between my stuff the themes themselves and leaving out, uh, leaving space for, for the receiver and I'd imagine there is also like a lot of research involved not even just with the musical aspect or even self-realization but you almost have to explore many different artistic mediums whether it is through literature or art to get a really good understanding of the subject matter you express in your music right Absolutely. The, the, that, that part is, uh, I would say, very ele elemental, uh, elementary for, for everything we do, that whatever we do should come from some, somewhere solid, um, based on something we know and, and figuring out how we know it is part of that process as well, of course, to determine the direction you take. Uh, um, yeah, when you when you sort of start venturing into the creative process or intuitive process or, or whatever layers you you put on top of that, I find it much um, much better to to stand on solid ground, not climbing into trees without roots and and so on. Because even though it isn't a, a, um, it isn't a goal for me to to create music or recreate music from any specific time period. Um, it is about uh, diving into to old things, um, but create new things. And and if those old things are are based on factual knowledge, I think that's to be preferred. And it seems like you know because you know Norse mythology has been around for centuries and centuries, and the world has developed so much, and therefore the people in it develop so much. So therefore, people's interpretations of things are going to develop. And you see how like bands, really. you see how bands like Amina Marth, you know, incorporates their style. And I don't know, yeah. if there, I don't know if there was any death metal back during the times of Odin. If there was, that's awesome. But <laughs> Who like, knows? <laughs> but like, I feel like yours is like. You know, and not to discredit the other bands who incorporate the subject matter, but I feel like yours is the most direct. I feel like it is almost like if you want to know what it's about, this check out Wardruna. Well, thank you for that. And and as you say, um, there are many ways to to approaching these things, and and there are many. It comes down to what your intention is, I guess. Uh, and um, in any case, I I think. Uh, yeah, whether you you attempt to make like fully authentic music or re like um, yeah recreating uh, historical music, that's that's one part of it. Some so for some it's more like um, the rapping, like the imagery and and lyrics wise. And for us, it it um, it was more about uh, trying to interpret these things as close as possible on their own premises using relevant instrumentation and, and uh, relevant language etc um, but it's also only natural that uh, modern in 
interpretations are, are ba also based on modern notions of what that time is. So I guess there will, there will, <clears throat> there will always be some um, sort of balance and, and a lot of de decisions you need to take. It um, comes down to what your intention is, I guess. Absolutely. And I'd imagine because, you know, it's always good to know what you're doing and know what subject matter you want to express and your message and everything like that. But I feel like your music is very, very organic and very like, you know, it, I feel like your music captures a moment, which is something that I find very difficult to do in any medium of art. So like, do you kind of like to, to get inspired to feel that creative energy? Do you does it come to you out of nowhere? Or do you like need to be in a certain place or be in a certain element for the creativity to flow? It, it can be both, you know. Um, but but as you say, it, it, it I think one of the reasons why uh, people might have that feeling also that it, it feels true is because it comes from somewhere. And it's, it's a very honest process. Um, but uh, when it comes to inspiration, that that can uh, come from many different things. Sometimes, you know, the, the nature can be that inspiration. Sometimes the absence of nature can be that inspiration because then you have an element of longing and longing is a very powerful force um, in, in creative matters, I would say, uh, a very powerful force. Um, it can be, sometimes it can be the instruments that provoke some sort of uh, vision. I create a lot of stuff when I'm out walking. That's very often when I hear and see, see the music. Sometimes it's the themes themselves that are, have such a strong image to it that, um, yeah, I, I can kind of hear it, um, uh, hear how, hear the sound of it. And, and then it's about, uh, in all of these instances uh, or, or cases, it's about going back into the studio and, and try and hunt them down, chase down that vision. And, and of course, that process is also um, 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 acted out in many, many different ways. Sometimes it's, it's easy. Sometimes it takes years to capture a song. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'd imagine the longer you work on something, the harder it is to kind of like maintain that energy because I feel like for an artist, you kind of want to feel the same way when you finish a song or an album as you do when you're started. But if you're working on an album, you know, for a long time, it might be hard to maintain that spark. Right? Yeah, and it's it's important to take uh, to take breaks, uh, to take uh, to put it aside when you, when you're stuck, and and uh, and sometimes it can work to just move through it, to work through it because uh, I don't believe necessarily in this um this uh, glamorous image of being struck by creative lightning bolts uh sitting in a beautiful stone in nature uh yeah okay sometimes that happens but very often it's hard work um to move and work within these creative processes there is also an element of patience uh, you i'm very wary i don't like to well, our songs aren't really like typical song structures, uh, song structure based. Um, they they are more freely created, and I, I tend to like to let the song um, take me where it wants to take me, rather than me trying to force it into a, a grid uh, that is predetermined. So that and that process, um, yeah, it, it it's. Um, uh, but as you say, um, it, it can be, it can be very, um, you can lose your energy working on songs like this. So sometimes you just need to put it aside and be patient and revisit it with, with, um, sort of fresh airs and, uh, yeah, yeah. I feel perspectives. Like, I feel like art is life. And, you know, when, when you start creating something, I feel like you're not just you're, you're basically just the art, the composition's humble guide in a way. You kind of have to let things, you know, form on their own. If you, you know, it's like having a child. You can't, you know, you, you obviously want your child to be safe and you want your child to, you know, grow up to be something great. But at the same time, you also have to let your child figure things out on their own. And I feel like that's sort of like what art is in a way. You're its humble guide to let it, you know. Yeah, develop. you're you're an instrument basically, uh, and and the the song itself is the composer, or at least that's one of the perspectives. Um, you you have completely different ways of approaching it as well. But for me, that that is uh, what feels most most natural for me. 
Yeah, you don't want to put the art on life support, as I say. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Now, Listened. because of your live shows being as theatrical as they are and really capturing, you know, I feel like the imagery of Wardruna is just as important as the music itself. Like, I can't listen to a Wardruna song without picturing that show you did at Town Hall a year or two ago and, you know, seeing your live presence and your live energy. So, do you, because... Do you almost feel like maybe there's a similar element to playing live as there is when you're songwriting, or do you consider it a completely separate art altogether? No, I would say it's connected, definitely. And of course, the recording process, especially in terms of uh, the vocals, need to have that same energy, same level of presence, same level of honesty. You know, you, you it's about becoming one with the the words it's becoming uh, about becoming one with the music um being f fully there um so, yeah serving your heart on a platter uh to to the listeners and 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 that part is is very much what the live process is about it's a very honest uh direct um a pure expression um uh, that we yeah, that, that's kind of the goal, what, what we want to, to do and, and try to do uh, every single time we go on that stage to, to yeah, to be the face of the music, to be the music, basically, um, be the words um, and, and be fully present, connect with the surround. Every night is different. Every group of audience is different. Um, you yourself is different every day. Um, so you have to tune in to all of these things and, um, yeah, adapt and yeah, just be present, I think. Yeah. You know, from the outside looking in, somebody could probably misinterpret, uh, you know, your performances. Oh, they're portraying a character on stage mm. or like they're, they're portraying something that they're not. But I feel like, you know, the Wardruna albums is coming from you. The live shows is coming from you. Everything is like, again, physical. You are the art and we are the art together. Yeah, and of course, um, it, when when I'm on stage, maybe it's perceived th theatrical, but on stage it feels the opposite. It feels like uh, it's extremely honest uh, and vulnerable uh, in that sense also. Um, um, because it's it's not portraying characters, it's it's uh, putting a face to the music uh, in a way. Um, yeah, we we sort of um, yeah, I, I can't find the right word for it. <laughs> in a yeah. way, it's it's easier to do it than to explain it in a way. Yeah, but do you almost feel like, because I, one band or one musical group that I feel like is really good at capturing, you know, its ritualistic energy is, a, a, maybe you've heard of them, High Lung, and uh, mm. they, they have a similar sort of like uh, aesthetic. Do you almost feel like you have to practice maybe like a choreography before you go on tour and present this material? Is there almost kind of like a choreography element or is the <laughs> stage or is the stage presence just as organic as the songwriting process? Um, no, uh, there is no choreography <laughs> and no, no secret messages in between, uh, between us musicians either. It's uh, a very organic thing that has grown over years, uh, just by, by doing it. And, uh, yeah, High Lung, I guess is, is more of a, um, a ritual theater in a, in a way. Um, so I would say the. Um, our, our approaches is a bit different um, um, in that sense, um, but yeah, it, it's it's cool stuff, and of course, I, they're great people as well. Yeah, yeah. We we before the world ended, we actually had the privilege of seeing them in New York City, and it was beautiful. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good people. Yeah. Now, are you ready for the most difficult question of the whole interview? Absolutely. Bring it. All right. How do you know this could go for? a song, a poem, any medium of art you work with. How do you know when art is done? Um, you decide. You decide. Mm. Because that, that process can go on and on, and that's actually a discipline to say, stop. Um, and, and that can be really challenging, really hard, because, uh, and, I think that part of that process is is linked to your ego, in a way. You 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 go you sort of dig dig a very deep hole of of uh, detail controlling and and um, 
yeah that controlling element you everything needs to be this and that and and you can become blind in that process so that's something i've i've learned uh, throughout the years um more as a discipline that um being done is of course sometimes it's a feeling it's, it's a very pure feeling uh, that you just know that this is uh, yeah this is the way it needs to be uh, but other times uh, you have to decide it yeah and i love that term you said discipline because it really is like i think knowing i i i even envy you as an artist being having the ability oh i could put this down and come back to it later which is very very difficult for a lot of people to to have that discipline i think that's a great word to describe when finishing an art a discipline do you have a yeah. theor theoretical background as well that you've studied as well no 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 i'm a musical illiterate uh, i can't read notes or or um uh, any any of that it, it goes in one ear and out the other in a way so i i guess that's um i think it's a uh, uh, most of the time i think it's a blessing um uh, because i'm not caught up in a lot of rules um and that kind of thing but um, yeah sometimes uh, for practical reasons uh, when working with other people who are more dependent on on that kind of uh, approach uh, it can be of course uh, difficult to not uh, being able to uh, speak that language uh, has there ever been though with any song on any of your albums has there ever been any happy accidents if you will because it seems like you are very focused and you are very you know you very know what you're you very much know what you're doing in a way it's not like you're you're improvising but has there ever been any happy accidents in the creative process yeah m many times i think that that element of of the uh, the unforeseen is um is part of the magic i think um yeah the the spontaneous things or or the yeah i i've had uh even even uh <clears throat> yeah like like uh squeaky noises or or uh, um scratching uh, a chair in the middle of a recording and and that combined with a drum makes uh, a, a perfect sound or whatever it can be many different things um but i think th th that's so, sort of an x factor um uh, um yeah a, a beautiful bonus the time time it ha uh, the times when it happened okay yeah it, well again happy accidents you know you can't predict yeah. them and you can't you can't control them it happens no. when it comes yeah yeah and and sometimes it's just so um profoundly right uh, when they occur and uh, yeah it feels like um, gifts from beyond yeah it, it's just like a sign like it it, it it was meant to be there yeah exactly and I have two more questions for you but uh, when it comes to you know because outside of Wardruna you've played with many projects you're a very prolific artist do you depending on like the project or that you're working with is there a different mind frame depending on who you're playing with or you know what you're working on whether it is Wardruna or Gorgoroth or, you know, even the stuff you've done for Assassin's Creed, or is there a usual method behind the madness that applies to all forms of creativity? Uh, well, uh, it, it's both, uh, I would say. Um, of course, everything you need, you need to adapt. You can't sort of uh, force a, a circle into a square or, or vice versa. Um, so you need to uh, you, you of course need to adapt. I think the core, at least the, the later projects that I've been involved in the, the, the last 15 years or so is, um, is projects where I'm allowed to sort of um, keep the core of what I do, uh, the core philosophy and the core instrumentation or, or expression at least. Um, but, but um yeah, many of these cases, uh, like my work with Eva Bjornsson from Enslaved, there uh, the toolbox is different in a way, which um, meaning uh, uh, I have different kinds of instruments that I normally uh, don't use in Wodruna. So it, that that opens up for for different options basically. Um, in terms of uh, my my work on Assassin's Creed. Um, 
Yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, with with Runa, it's not about portraying music from any specific time. Um, But in Assassin's Creed, um, that time span is more uh, given. So, of course, that that changes the the approach a bit as well, and it changes the toolbox. Yeah. Uh, What what instruments I I use and and, um, what language I use, etc. So, I guess uh, those are the factors um, that uh, give each... Uh, project their um, their face and direction and um, but I I feel the core uh, the core um, philosophy behind it is the same wherever I go yeah it, it's like the best of both worlds you have to kind of like change a pair of shoes but it's not changing who you are in a way yeah doesn't change the heart yep I just winked that it doesn't change it may change the shoes but it doesn't change the heart um I'm, I, got, <laughs> yeah. I gotta write that I gotta write that down yeah. somewhere coin it yeah yep exactly trademark it and uh the final question I wanted to ask you is going back to White Raven the new album has maybe playing because it is very much about human connection as much as it is about the mythology did maybe playing live and interacting with your fans over the years and you know working with so many great people did maybe your experience with human connection influenced the, the idea behind this album as well? Uh, I think everything you do um, uh, changed, uh, has the potential of changing you or make you grow or make you realize, um, yeah, make, make you gr- grow as a person. And, and of course, experience is, is a big part of that, whether or not that's a musical experience or, or a personal experience. Um, um, or, or human interaction, etc. All of these factors, uh, of course, um, go into that pot. I'm not the same person as I was uh, when I started Wardruna, and, and of course, my music reflects that. It, it, I feel that's a natural and organic process, and, and of course, everything you do and experience um, um, influence the, that creative outlet, I would say. Yeah, I feel like all humans are teachers one way or another. Even if you despise yeah. another person, they're going to be an influence on you one way or another because they altered your perception or altered your emotion or altered your reality in some way or another. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Great to talk to you. It's great to finally have a new computer, everybody. We could finally start doing video interviews again. But uh, is there just anything else with Wardruna that you would like to promote in terms of uh, maybe to hold people over while we're waiting out this whole pandemic and everything? Maybe some live stream performances or just anything else that you would like to promote for the release of Light Raven? Not specific and, and not something I want to say at this point. But um, yeah, I encourage uh, people to yeah stay tuned and and uh, follow us um, in, in the time to come there will be um, interesting things happening um, before before uh, 22nd of january as well when the the album comes out so uh, yeah i just encourage people to uh, to stay tuned with uh, what we're up to awesome well thank you so much einar everybody we are here with einar of war Druna. be sure to check out white raven january 22nd 2021 start the new year off on a great note this is alex from heavy new york we'll see you next time